So after doing several videos on the Tab S6 Lite, I thought it might be a good idea to give you some tips and tricks if you just got your Tab S6 Lite or if you're just new to Galaxy tablets in general. Even though I'm using the 2022 edition, obviously these tips and tricks are also gonna work on the previous Tab S6 Lite as well. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Up here in the notification shade is gonna be Samsung DeX. It sort of moves everything from the top down to the bottom, almost like a taskbar on a computer. You get your notification shade, you get your screenshot shortcut, you can see your navigation down here in the corner and then all of your apps in the corner as well. Nice thing is you can connect this to a keyboard and mouse and sort of use it like a laptop. Definitely makes it a little bit easier to do some multitasking. And then let's say you don't want to use DeX anymore. You've got a couple different options. Down here in the corner, you can say exit DeX. And then in the notification shade, you can just hit the little DeX icon. Over here on the side, you'll see a little transparent line. If you just swipe over, you're gonna get more shortcuts and their multi-window tray. If you tap the little lines there, you can modify that and, and you can put pretty much whatever apps you want over there. You'll also notice if you go to recent apps, you get shortcuts down here at the bottom. For the apps that you've used recently on here, kind of makes it a little bit easier to get to those. Or you can just tap the little icons and do open and split screen, or you can open in a pop-up view. Once you get that the size that you like, then you can sort of move it around to wherever you want, really. Or if you just drag down, it removes it. Same thing for split screen. If you just tap the little icon, choose open and split screen view. And it's sort of convenient. You can have two things going at the same time. It works in landscape or portrait mode. And then you can drag it in the middle there to resize. Uh, and then to exit, you could just drag the line all the way over. Or you could just do recent apps and close them. If you want to be able to write something with your S Pen and have it actually turn into text, if you go into your S Pen settings, you'll just want to toggle on or off where it says S Pen to text. Then when you're searching for something, you can see it just takes a second and then it types it out. The other thing that's kind of nice is if you want to get files off of here, it's pretty simple to use an external drive. You can either use a USB-C external drive or an adapter like this that goes from USB-C to USB-A. And you can connect several things, external drives, USB mics, lots of possibilities. You can connect a lot of different stuff to this, like an Xbox controller, PlayStation, keyboards, wireless mouse, headphones, just going right into the Bluetooth settings. Pretty much whatever you have that's Bluetooth, chances are it's gonna connect to this. You also have several different ways to do screenshots on here. One way you can do it is go over to your S Pen shortcuts and choose Smart Select. Then you can choose just a section of the screen and you can modify that how you like. Another way to do it is to hold down the power button and the volume down at the same time, uh, and you'll see it take a screenshot there. And you get some options down there to share or edit the screenshot. The other thing you're probably gonna wanna change, if you go into settings, advanced features, where it says side key, you can choose between power off menu or wake Bixby when you press and hold the power button. I don't really use Bixby that much, so I just leave it on power off. And then you'll also see side key settings down here at the bottom. You could change those as well. Now, if you wanna change your navigation buttons down here, if you go into navigation settings under display, choose navigation bar. You can choose between swipe gestures or buttons. You can also choose swipe from bottom or swipe from sides and bottom. You've also got gesture sensitivity here to adjust as well. Also, when you're using buttons, you've got the option to change the button order and you can even change the button position from left, center, or right. So a lot of that is just gonna come down to personal preference, but it's nice to have all those options to choose from. Then if you go into advanced features under settings, uh, under motions and gestures, you've got a couple different options here. You can double tap to turn on the screen or double tap to turn off the screen. You can even keep the screen on while viewing. So that way it's gonna detect your face and doesn't keep going to sleep. If you just hold down on the home screen, you've got your home screen settings, widgets, wallpaper and style. You've got a couple different options here as far as wallpapers. You can also do a dynamic lock screen where it's gonna be changing all the time. So you've got a few different accent colors to choose from as well. And then also if you go into settings, 
under lock screen, you can go into clock style and customize what the lock screen looks like. Uh, you've got a few different options to choose from. You can also choose different colors. Just keep in mind certain colors, you're not gonna be able to see the clock on that background. Another nice feature is on the lock screen, you can actually change the shortcuts down the corners to pretty much whatever app you want. A couple things I like to do when I first get a tablet is go into settings. You'll notice right there at the top, you get the option between light or dark mode. You've also got that shortcut up here in the notification shade, probably a little faster to get to it from there. I also like to turn off the adaptive brightness. I feel like it just gives me a little more control over how bright the screen is. Uh, then if you scroll down to screen timeout, I feel like it times out a little too quick on the default setting. So I usually use a little bit longer, but you can adjust it from 15 seconds all the way up to 30 minutes. Up here in the notification shade, you got a lot of different shortcuts, but if for some reason you want to edit those, just swipe over. I would make sure you've got Dolby Atmos turned on. Speakers just sound better with that in my opinion. But let's say you want to add some more to this. Just hit the little plus symbol and you've got quite a few other things you can add. Tap and hold and then drag it down. Now if you want to get rid of some of these, just tap and hold and drag it up. Once you hit done, then it updates. Now you can turn off all these shortcuts just by tapping them once. But if you tap and hold on each one, you're going to get other options to choose from as well. When you swipe left of the home screen, you're going to get the Google Discover News Feed, which I actually prefer. If you tap and hold on the home screen, it does give you the option to pick Samsung Free or Google Discover. It's sort of going to be personal preference on which one you like better. Over here on the side, you'll notice you've got some S Pen shortcuts. You probably already realized that you can add or subtract some of those by hitting the little plus symbol. Plus you've got S Pen settings down here in the corner as well. It even lets you turn on sounds if you want to make it sound like a pencil when you're drawing. If you don't like the location of where the S Pen shortcuts is, you can move it to wherever you want along the edge or you can move it to the opposite side. So that's about all the time I have for this one. I feel like there's a ton of other things you can do on this tablet, but hopefully this will get you started off in the right direction. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.